Welcome to Getting Started with Windows Phone 7 Series. My name is Bill Loden, and in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you everything you need to do to get started developing for the next generation of Windows Phone. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is open up a web browser and navigate to developer.windowsphone.com. This will take you to the main landing page for Windows Phone. Now, notice that here you'll find a link to download the tools today. So, of course, we'll want to click on that. And here is a getting started guide. And one of those options is to download the developer tools. So clicking on this takes us to the primary download page. Now, this is the Windows Phone Developer Tools CTP, or Community Technology Preview. You will need Windows 7 or Windows Vista in order to run this software and a complete list of system requirements is shown here. Now I want to point out that this file is actually very small. That's because this is just the installer that kicks off the requisite downloads. For instance, if you already have Visual Studio 2010 installed, it won't need to download as many components. But if you don't, it's going to take care of downloading Visual Studio 2010 Express Edition for Windows Phone. It'll take care of downloading the Windows Phone SDK and the emulator. And again, everything you need to get started developing for Windows Phone. Now, I've already downloaded the tools, so I'll go ahead and close the browser and open up Visual Studio 2010 Express for Windows Phone. Go ahead and click on New Project. And with this edition, you'll notice I only get the templates for Windows Phone. So I've got Silverlight templates, including a phone application, a phone list application, and a class library, as well as the XNA related templates. And notice here, I can develop for Windows, for Xbox, or for Windows Phone. So in this case, I just want to select the Windows Phone application template from Silverlight. We'll call it Hello Windows Phone, and we'll go ahead and click OK. So now Visual Studio 2010 is building out the project for me. The entire solution gets created. And notice that immediately I'm taken into a design surface that's based on a XAML file, just like in Silverlight. I'm first going to switch to the design only view. And you'll note that this is a fully interactive designer here. The design surface, I can select elements directly with the mouse. They'll show up in the properties window. I can edit uh, the properties of those elements. For instance, I'll modify the text property of this particular text block that I've selected. I can go over and bring up the toolbox. So just like in a Silverlight or WPF or even Windows Forms, I've got a toolbox that I can select from. I'll go ahead and grab a text box and maybe a button. And you also get these indicators for layout. So helping you lay your elements out within the design surface. And one other thing I, I want to point out, and if you look at the button, you can really tell this, that the actual size of the button, which you can tell from those bounds indicators, uh, is actually has a margin that is greater than the actual button itself. And that's uh, to make those touch controls easier to hit. As you can probably guess, simply double clicking on the button would generate an event handler in the code behind. And so once I'm in that event handler, I can write whatever code I'd like to do. So for instance, I'll change the text block page title text property uh, to be equal to hello plus the name of the user, which presumably they type into the text box. I'm going to make another change back in the XAML, only this time. Let's uh, switch back to the XAML, and this time, instead of doing the work in the design surface, I'll actually switch to the XAML view, just to point out that uh, you can, of course, uh, do work there. And so in this case, I'm going to add a foreground property to the text block. And we'll pull this out of uh, the resource dictionary and it's going to be a static resource called Phone Accent Brush. So this is just a simple way of having that text match whatever the user selected accent color is. One other thing I'd like to point out, if we go to the properties of the project, you'll notice that the output is a zap file or XAP file. Uh, this is how 
uh, phone applications are deployed in Windows Phone. It's just like Silverlight. Let's see where we are. We'll go ahead and start debugging, or you can hit F5 if you like. Um, now this process, the first time you do it, is actually going to take some time, so I wouldn't be surprised uh, if the Windows Phone emulator takes a few minutes to get started. Now I've accelerated this a bit for the demo, and so you'll notice that after a few moments the application is deployed to the configured phone and there's my app running in the emulator. Now notice that if I click in the text box the uh, keyboard, the on-screen keyboard appears and I can interact with it either by uh, using the on-screen keyboard or by using my physical keyboard. The, uh, the point is that I didn't have to do anything in order for that keyboard to appear, I just had to create a text box. And notice that this is probably not what I wanted. I changed the application title, but not my hello world message. So we'll need to fix that. Now you might be tempted to just go and close the emulator. Like if you were developing an ASP.NET application, you would close the browser. But in this case, that's not what we want to do because it's going to force the emulator to shut down and then we have to wait for it to come back up again the next time we make a change. So instead, just click stop debugging and that way the emulator stays running and we can still deploy to it later, but we don't have to pay that penalty of having the emulator state get uh, all brought up from scratch. So let's fix that error. I didn't want text block page title, as it turns out. What we really wanted to say is text block list title, because that's the control uh, that has the hello message that we want to modify. So we'll go ahead and fix that. And while we're here, let's go ahead and add a breakpoint just to show you how debugging on Windows Phone is just like you'd expect from everything else that you're familiar with from Visual Studio. Now notice that uh, the emulator actually comes up a lot faster because in this case I only need to deploy. I don't need to worry about bringing up the emulator state. So this time around I'm just going to to use the physical keyboard as opposed to the on-screen keyboard from the emulator. Quickly type in a name and click the button. And just like you'd expect, we're going to hit that breakpoint. And once we're in the debugger, we get our tooltips, we get uh, the locals window, the immediate window, we can create watches, uh, we can create conditional breakpoints, everything that you'd expect. We can step through code, step over code, in this case resume, and you can see that uh, the application now works as we'd expect it to behave, and you've now seen the basic development experience in Windows Phone 7 series. Now, here's a few links just to get you started. Again, developer.windowsphone.com should probably be your first stop to go get those tools. Uh, there's lots of documentation available already, and of course, keep an eye on the blogs uh, to keep uh, an eye on what's coming and what's, what's released. Thank you for taking your time and for taking this first step towards Windows Phone 7 Series development.